Hi everyone, welcome to episode seven of My Midland. I'm your host, Public Information Officer Aaron Bailey, and today I'm joined with our Deputy City Manager, Morris Williams Jr. Hello. Thanks for joining us. How are you? Morris, I'm doing fabulous. Great, great. Are you so happy to be here? I am. There's no other place that I'd rather be <laughs> than here with you. I knew that was going to be your answer. <laughs> <laughs> you have been with the City of Midland for more than 20 years. You're currently Deputy City Manager. Talk to us about what your role entails. Well, um, it entails just about overseeing everything in the city. <laughs> Um, I work with a great city management team, uh, Robert Patrick, who is our uh, city manager, and Tina Giles, who is our assistant city manager uh, directly. I oversee fire, finance, engineering services, as well as community services. So that's my direct day-to-day, -day, but we touch just about every aspect as a team. Uh, we touch every aspect of the city. And you also are at every city council meeting, listening yes. to citizens. Yes, yes. Listening to our citizens, and that's a, that's a very important part of our role, our day-to-day -day role, is dealing with citizens and uh, whatever their, their concerns, sometimes it's complaints, um, um, just making sure that they understand and, and getting the answers um, from the, the various departments and from us that they, they request. And with more than 20 years, talking about the different roles you've had with the city of Midland. <clears throat> well, way back in 1999. Take us all the way back to the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> way back in 1999, I started with the city and I started as a sanitation driver in the solid waste department. So I was driving, I was your friendly uh, trash truck driver. And, uh, and that, was a, that was a good role. It was a kind of entry level position, but I really enjoyed it. Was that something you wanted to do, or did you just kind of fall into it? I'll tell you what, um, I was driving the school bus. Really? Yes, I was driving the school bus, and I went from hauling kids to hauling trash. <laughs> and I always say, they smell the same. But at but, least they don't But they don't talk. Them. Yeah, they trash don't talk. Doesn't trash talk doesn't talk. Yet. So, you know, <laughs> and, and I say that. It, Football players smell the same, you know, yeah. <laughs> after a football game. But, but actually, I love that. Uh, I love, you know, hauling, uh, driving the kids around on the school bus. But I was trying to get into the city, and and I was just um, uh, getting started in college and stuff like that. So, um, when I came to the city, that was my position. And I did that for a couple years before being promoted in that same department to supervisor, and then that's where I just started to climb the ranks. So. Um, I was in the solid waste department for um, about 18 years before coming over to city management, but I was a part of the, the upper level management team since uh, 2010. So. And you went from director of solid waste to assistant city manager, That's right? correct. And That's now correct. deputy city manager. And now deputy city manager. So. And during all these roles, you also got your bachelor's and master's. So talk to us about that and how you did that th with the city. That's correct. Uh, when I started in 1999, I, um, I, ironically, about the same time, I was just getting started at Midland College. So um, I went to school and, and I, I actually got my associates as well. So did my associate's degree. So there were uh, times in the evening I was jumping off the trash truck, 5.30. 5.45 at night, running out to Midland College so I can uh, uh, attend a class and attend a couple of classes. So I was doing night school and then after I uh, graduated with my associates, I went on to Lubbock Christian and did like a distance learning program and, and did that and got my bachelor's degree in organizational management. And then a couple years after that, I went over to UTPB and I would kind of do the same thing, get off at night and drive over to Odessa, take some classes, and then I got my master's in uh, business administration. So that's my little story. It's not the way that I would advise the, the younger <laughs> generation to do it. You know, just kind of, you know, I kind of went the back way about it, but I would say, you know, get out of high school while mom and dad is still paying for some of this stuff and, <laughs> and, uh, and do it that way. But it was still rewarding. Um, the city has played a great part in that. Um, I was part of you know, tuition reimbursement and some of that, uh, something that our organization offers, and also just the support. So it's it's not just me, but some of the, the uh, superiors and supervisors that I worked underneath 
uh, guiding me and, and allowing me to, you know, do it and do that and be a part of those classes and those programs. So. And you said you started your associates right about the time you were starting with the city. So when yep. you were going for that, did you know you wanted to get your bachelor's and master's or did, did that come with the support? No, it was, just, from... it, was just, it was just part of the process, but uh, no, I didn't know any of that. <laughs> <laughs> I, just, like associate I just started. Yeah. Each semester was a new challenge. You know, it was like, wow. Um, so so there, were, there were some before me. Um, there was a fire chief by the name of uh, Russ Conley, and he had went through Midland College, and he, he, had, he was kind of like a, and, and he probably doesn't even uh, know that I feel this way about that, but he was kind of a poster, uh, poster child of Midland College, and he had a little testimony about how he had went to college, and, and, um, and that was kind of, so it was things like that that motivated me, and it was kind of my quiet motivation. Um, but no, I, I had no clue where it was going to lead me, as a matter of fact, yeah. And now, what would you tell someone that's maybe they graduated from high school, they've been doing whatever job they've been doing, and they don't have a degree, and if they start with the city, what would you tell them about Well, I, I'd say, you know, there, there's different strokes for different folks. Uh, some people are not as apt to education, or they have these different, but I'll tell you, education has opened up many doors for me, so it's it's all a part of it. And I know I'm talking to a, a educated person in, in yourself, and just, um, and we're both chaparrales, yeah, you know, alumni <laughs> of, <laughs> of Love of Christian. So I think it's a key, and you can tell, you can say this better than I can, it's a key to get into some doors that you mm -hmm. wouldn't be able to. Uh, but people who are coming to the city of Midland, you know, we do have that program. We do offer tuition reimbursement, and that's one of the perks that we offer as an organization. So I would say, Take advantage of your opportunities because I had no clue that I could land in this seat. I mean, mm -hmm. I, I must be honest, when I started driving a, a trash truck over 20 years ago, I didn't think I didn't think this would be my landing spot. Did you think even when you were driving the trash truck, you're like, well, that'd be pretty good if I just stayed in this job for however long it is? Yeah, because because just working for the city of Midland in itself is a good job, in my opinion. Um, no matter what level, because every every level is in, is important. I can tell you right now that the trash truck driver is much more important than me. If he stops doing his job for a week, <laughs> You're compared hear to me, about it. exactly <laughs> compared to me stopping doing my job for a week, you'll feel it a lot more from from his standpoint. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, it's they're all important jobs, and and I would have, you know, I I'm a, I'm I like to strive and I like to shoot for the stars, but I'll tell you, every position is important. Mm -hmm. And with your 20 years, well, more than 20 years, right. you're also a native Midlander. Yep. What has made you stay? Well, I was born, raised, I like to say this when I'm, when I'm out of town or I'm talking to somebody, born, raised, and, and I can't get out. One time they caught me <laughs> on the other side of Stanton and they drug me back to Midland. <laughs> but um, the truth is, you know, this is the only place that I've been. My, my family is here, mom, dad, my grandmother, um, it's home. And I'll tell you something about Midland, it just has a different feel. And this is for me because this is where I'm from, it just has a different feel. Um, I love Midland, I love the people in Midland. Um, we have a pride that, you know, it's, it's just different mm -hmm. than anywhere else and, and so it's home. I don't know, you know, maybe one day I'll go and venture out and live somewhere else, but. I could easily live here for the rest of my life. And so, I don't have know. Have you ever ventured out? I mean, you've obviously visited other yeah, places, been, but have you ever moved anywhere and no, been like, oh, that's not for me, I'm coming no, out? No, I never have. I never have. Uh, uh, you know, we've talked about it, thought about it a couple of times, but I never have. Yeah. Midland, ride or die. <laughs> <laughs> Midland, ride or die. <laughs> With the growth that you see happening in Midland, what is it like seeing that from when you were little to now how much the city has grown what is that like for you man it's it's amazing and then working from the city side to look at you know whether it be old maps old photographs you can you know now i'm getting a i'm getting a little seasoned um <laughs> as they say 
I can look back and I can now think about, man, I remember that used to be a dirt pasture, you know, mm -hmm. and now we have a whole development. Yes. Um, there was a time, you know, in, in solid waste, we followed it very close because we had to set up trash routes and different things like that. And getting to the management floor, uh, even though I'm involved in a lot of it, I don't see it day to day. So I may be riding somewhere. I'm like, God, it, it's a whole neighborhood. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a whole neighborhood, not a building, but <laughs> where did I miss a whole neighborhood? So uh, the growth in Midland is just, it's astonishing. Um, and and what this community has become, we're, we're not this sleepy little West Texas town that we used to be. I mean, it's it's definitely, um, it, it's a diamond in the rough in my opinion. Are there projects that in your time as manager, or I guess your time with the city that stick out to you that you're very passionate about or things that have been really exciting for you to see? Um, wow. The you're growth, the yeah, yeah, you put me on the spot on that one. The growth, the growth in itself is, uh, is something that, that sticks out to me. Um, or, you know, let's see, it's so many different things. Seeing, seeing the growth in the, the, in the different sections of town, Northwest, uh, Northeast, even the growth on the southeast side of town and, and how that community has expanded and it's so much over there. Um, just as far as buildings or something, I think um, being a, you know, just looking at the Bush, uh, George, George, w, uh, George H.W. Bush Convention Center and just how beautiful that thing is, you know, and uh, COVID, we hadn't really had a chance to yeah. just showcase it, you know, like uh, like we should, but just different parts. I mean, heck, I can point to different things. I can point to Dennis the Menace Park and yes. think about when I was a little kid, what it looked like compared to what it looks like today. I mean, and, and the joy that I know I had at that park as a kid, and then looking at it today and looking at these kids now, getting a whole different sense, but it's mm -hmm. the same joy. You know, it's like, golly, we you, thought it was cool when I went, <laughs> but it's really cool now. I know, that's what I was gonna say. Yeah. As an adult, seeing all the park renovations that have happened and going around, we just go to take pictures of them, but right. then you see them and you're like, dang, like if we had these when we were kids, this would have been amazing. Yeah, the, the you know, all the splash pads and different things, the park downtown, uh, right outside the, the convention center that I just spoke of, mm -hmm. there's a splash pad and, and just seeing the kids, you know, hopping around, jumping around, and just having a great time. So it's it's just a different, it's a different feel, but uh, you know, all of it, it's all encompassing. And that kind of leads us into our citizen questions, but before okay. we get there, we're gonna ask you our 10 fun fact questions. Okay. So <laughs> if you've listened to an episode, you'll already know them. But I probably should have. Yeah, you know, <laughs> we see how it is. But <laughs> what's your favorite movie? Favorite movie? Oh, this is just terrible. But I, I'm a comedy guy, and I hate to admit this, I can pick out a whole bunch, but the one that's coming to mind is Blazing Saddles. Okay. <laughs> yeah, you guys, I don't know if you guys have even I heard actually of that have movie. seen that. Okay, yeah, um, it's, it's slapstick, but it's, <laughs> it's funny. Morgan and Kevin know I'm not really a movie person. Okay. And PD, the Chiefs, have given me a list of classics that I have to that watch. That you need to go watch, and okay. Blazing Saddles was okay. on that list. <laughs> All right. <laughs> What's your favorite place to eat in Midland? Oh, man, that's enough. <laughs> Um, ooh, that's a good one. You can give a few if you have yeah, a, yeah. your most frequent <clears throat> spots. Frequent spots, uh, you know, because sometimes convenience just takes me away from some of the spots. So I'll go with favorite. Um, Tanks is good. Tanks is good. I've, okay. I've got to be where I can get me a nap after I eat Tanks. Oh, yeah. Um, uh, I, like, I like a Hua's. Uh, uh, you know, I have I have a special that I go and order over there, and it's kind of the same thing. It's a Mexican restaurant. Okay. Uh, who is Mexican restaurant? And uh, let's see, uh, Doris J Soul Food. That's a that's a newer restaurant, and it's it's really good. It's what really do you good. recommend? At Doris J's, uh -huh. oh man, I recommend I recommend a nap after whatever you eat <laughs> over there. Um, For all three of those spots. Yeah, they they have. They have what's called, and this is a shameless plug, but they have what's called an oxtail burger. Oh. 
Oh. Yeah, yeah, it's a little different, but yeah, yeah, a little but different. it's really good though. Huh. It's really good. So interesting. Yeah, yeah. What's your favorite color? Uh, I'm gonna go with two black and gold. Combine them together because that's my fraternity's color. I was gonna say I think I know Alpha why. Alpha, Alpha. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> if you got, a, if you could have one <clears throat> superpower, what would you choose? Oh, that's a good one. Uh, wow. Maybe, maybe something to, uh, maybe some kind of freeze to freeze time, just to make everything Ooh, stop. That would be nice. Yeah, just, just give us a nice little yeah. two week break. Yeah, yeah, just make everything stop for just a second. So that would, that would be it. But I, I wouldn't want everything. I just need to stop stuff here, and yeah. then I can go on that two week break, and then we yeah. can come back to it. Yeah. So that would be it. Okay. Are you a dog or cat person? Um. Well. Uh, you don't have pets, do you? No, I don't. And uh, here recently. Uh, I've been, I've, you know, since I took over community services, uh, I've been dealing with the animal population, mm -hmm. so I've learned a lot. And, and uh, you know, the running joke now is I'm a cat person. I'm a cat <laughs> guy, so so maybe I'm a cat guy. I don't know, you know. So There's plenty up for adoption at the animal shelter. <laughs> okay. if, you do, if you do become a, cat, <laughs> a legit cat guy. Yeah, there you go. Okay, I'm very interested to hear your answer for this one. Uh oh. Your go-to karaoke song. Oh, I don't, do, I don't do karaoke. I don't do karaoke. If you were to do karaoke, oh, what would man, you say? Oh, man, that's a good one. Gosh, <laughs> man. I don't know on that one. You got to you got to pick something. Let's see. Is that is is Jump? Is that by Van Halen? I don't know. Okay, well, it's Kevin old, says but, yes. but it's old, but I think that would just kind of get the crowd hyped, so I'd probably okay, go yeah. with that You have to one. play to the crowd. Yeah, yeah, I'd play to the crowd, because I'd need them kind of laughing, because there's nothing serious <laughs> about me singing karaoke. Okay, Yeah. your favorite TV show? Uh, that'd probably be Sanford and Son. Okay. That's old school. That was an easy one yeah, for you. Yeah, that's an easy one. Your favorite sports team? Ah, Dallas Cowboys. They break my heart every season, but Dallas Cowboys. But you're still here. Yeah, I'm still here. <laughs> Favorite type of music? I like r and B. I I like r and B. Last one. All right. If you got a one meal for the rest of your life, what would it be? Oh, that's an easy one. I got to have chicken fried steak, man. I just okay. go, I'll go and with chicken. What are your sides? Kinda Mashed simple. potatoes? Uh, yeah, we can mix it. Well, if it's got to be the the only one, I better get something green. As bad as I hate to, let's go with uh, let's go with some broccoli. Maybe a broccoli and cheese casserole, and probably corn to give me something sweet. If it's the last meal, I okay. mean, if it's gonna be my only meal for the rest. Because you of can time. do a lot of variations with yeah, that. One. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's all we have for the fun facts. Fun we'll facts. We'll move into the citizen questions. Okay. Talking about the projects that have been big ones for you. This first citizen <clears> question <throat> is. What are your big dreams for our city? Well, over time, we've, we've talked about Midland becoming a, a world-class city. And, um, you know, we, we've, as I stated earlier, we've kind of grown out of this sleepy West Texas town. So, um, you know, just seeing the direction that we're going, uh, the direction that, um, you know, some of our council, uh, city council and, and mayors have taken us, I think we're heading towards that world-class city. And if I have anything to do with it, you know, as far as staff is concerned, I'd like to see us go that route. And for us to be on the map as one of the cities that people emulate, you know, when we go off to conferences or when we talk mm -hmm. to other people in our, in our stead, just the same as you, uh, I'd like for them to say, hey, I like what you guys are doing out in Midland. Tell me more. So yeah. that's kind of, that's my... Dreams. I know that's not really specific, but that's the bigger picture dream. So that's still good. Okay. An end goal. Mm-hmm. On the website, it mentions you enjoy mentoring the youth in our community. Uh-huh. Is there an organization you recommend? Yeah. Uh, making an Impact. Um, that's a, a local local organization. It's been in existence for a couple of years, and, and uh, I work closely with them. Um, they do some mentoring of youth, and they also uh, help out in the community, the underserved community, a lot. And then Rope Youth is uh, a program that I'm that I'm recently associated with, and they do a lot of good stuff in the community. Um, what yeah. kind of stuff? 
it's a lot to do with kids. They've been, uh, they run this young gentleman's program that they go into okay. schools and they, they put the kids in a coat, uh, uh, actually a suit, and they teach them, you know, how to teach tie them tie. etiquette, teach them how to tie a tie, and just kind of tell them about, you know, introduce them to um, people who may look like them and, and, and show them a different route than, you know, what they, they might go if they weren't introduced to this program. So um, those are two that I'm passionate, but there's all types of organizations. It's just not enough time to be a part of I all know. of them. Um, you know, I hate to put it on you, but is there anything <laughs> that you, what, what's one that you... Well, I am a big and a board member for Big Brothers Big Sisters, oh, so that's that, my big That's one. one of the most rewarding programs that you can be a part of. It's uh, a lot of Being fun. a big, yeah, so uh, kudos to you, congrats to you. At one point, I was kind of affiliated, I never had a little. Um, mm -hmm. I never got to that point, but, but I've done work that looks the same, but being a part of that organization is so rewarding, yeah. It is, the mm -hmm. highlight of my week. Yeah, there you go. But how did you get involved with those two organizations? <clears throat> well, one, the making an impact. I helped to found it. Oh, so, wow. Um, yeah, so that one. And then the other one, Rope Youth, uh, Carl Borowski is the guy who, who runs that program. And um, we, we, were, we are fraternity brothers. And so uh -huh. we, he hit me up and, and um, I've kind of watched that program grow from like the ground up. So... Uh, it's just time for me to get involved with them too. And if someone's listening and they're like, that gentleman's program, or is that what it's called? Yeah, Young Gentleman's Program. Young Gentleman. Uh -huh. If they're like, that sounds like <clears throat> something I would want to do, how do they get involved? Then um, I think you can just look up Rope, Rope Youth, Rope Youth here in Midland, and, uh, and, and it'll point them to the right direction. Mm -hmm. Okay. What position of yours at the city has been your favorite? Wow. They're all rewarding. <laughs> in their different ways. Yeah, in their different <laughs> ways. Um, I'll tell you, I, I've, I've got to give this answer. I'm biased towards the one that I'm in because I'm in it. But, <laughs> uh, but um, they're all rewarding. I will say, uh, you know, each level that you, that you promote to, it seems as though that one was most important. But being a part of just about every level in the organization, I think uh, the entry-level positions are the most important, in my opinion. Um, you know, you look at the organizational char chart, and it, and it, you know, if you know what that looks like, you got the people on top, and it starts with management, and it kind of branches down, but, but really and truly, it should be flipped upside down. So to answer your question, um, I really enjoy the position I'm in, but, uh, I think the the difference is made it would would be made as a, as a sanitation driver when I was a driver of the trash truck. So and they're really the unsung heroes of yes, city yes. government. I think. Yeah, I get their thanks and 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 I take it too because I'm just like that. But <laughs> no, <laughs> no. Like, thank you. Yeah. I know. <laughs> but no, they are unsung and 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 the people who do the work when, when we don't see what they do to. Mm -hmm to build the roads, to construct the roads, to, to fix the equipment in the park, to ensure that uh, that when you hit the faucet or, or you flush the toilet, that stuff moves the way it's supposed to move. They don't get that credit, but I think they're way more important than, than my position, so. And if you think about it, we obviously <clears throat> know what goes on, but when you think of the severe weather storm or the major flooding events yeah. that have happened, our utilities, transportation, sanitation yep. crews are all out working yep. at all hours through every single event that goes on just to make sure everyone at home is comfortable. That's correct. A part of, a part of our, organi our organization that nobody ever sees, mm -hmm. our dispatch team, you know, yes. those, those ladies and gentlemen that's part of that team, they are really unsung heroes. They keep the 911 phones operating and answered. And I mean, it's just, it, to see the whole team and what it takes to, to make this organization run, it's really a great deal. And it's, for, at least from our side of things, you know, it's it, the public will see, oh, City Hall's closed for whatever event it may be. But the amount of things that go on, even with City Hall being closed, no one really ever knows. That's correct. That's correct. And it's, it's all thanks to them. It's <laughs> always, it's, it's a 24-hour organization, even with uh, some of us that, that show up from eight to five. It's, it's mm -hmm. still work being done 24 seven. 
Yes, yeah. our phones are always on. <laughs> That's correct. That's correct. This question. Okay. Where do you shop for it your clothes? It seems like some trouble. <laughs> Where do I shop for my clothes? Well, I must admit, wherever there's a red or orange tag is where yeah. I shop. So, so there's no there's no specific place that I go, uh, but I do like to see the clearance racks. So but you do take pride in your style. I take pride yeah. in my style, but I, I like to look <laughs> I like to look like a million bucks and pay like a couple of bucks. Dress for less. Yeah, there you go. There you go. <laughs> do you have a favorite book? Oh man, um, yeah, that's a good question. I'm I'm not an avid reader, what they would call an avid reader like that. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not sure if I have a favorite book. It's probably the one with a bunch of pictures in it. Um, <laughs> so so I don't know that I have a favorite book, but but if I'm into a book, it's probably the one I'm reading at that time is my favorite. <laughs> yeah. I don't have a real go-to. To be vague. Yeah. Is yeah. The yeah. yeah, it's the one that I'm So reading. you're saying you'll take recommendations. There you if go. I'll take recommendations. If, if somebody has a favorite <laughs> book, I am here for it. And we'll pass it along. There you go. <laughs> Please, a couple of pictures if you don't mind. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Our last one. <clears throat> last one. Of the citizen question. Okay. What's your best dad joke? Oh, wow. Uh, best dad joke. According to my kids, anyone that I tell is probably my best. <laughs> Do they think you're pretty funny? Or no, just they, like, no they don't. I mean, it, you know, they, they laugh. They don't laugh when they're supposed to. Um, <laughs> so I tell a good joke. Maybe it's a dad joke, but I tell and a good thinking, joke. Man, this is, a, good this is a winner. This is this is my second life after I retire. It's going to be stand-up <laughs> comedy. But if they're my audience, it's not going to work. So they don't laugh when I tell that good joke. But if I put on a hat or something, oh, they bust out laughing. You know, and I'm like, this is serious. I'm I'm needing feedback yeah. on how I look in this. But um, so I don't I don't necessarily have uh, just that joke that's sitting and waiting, but. Do you have a dad joke? I, I only have this because if people watch or follow our fire department Facebook page last October, we did a dad joke series. Okay. So we had to come up. We did not come up with them. I will tell you, I found them all on Google. Yeah, right. But, yeah. I'm going to steal this joke. So, so here we go. What do you have? <laughs> did you hear the rumor about the butter? I did not. Well, I'm not going to spread it. <laughs> 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 That's okay. What I like. <laughs> All right. I don't think that one's gonna be what I need to tell in front of the kids. Okay. All right. We can give. We'll go back through our files and find the I list of you. all of them for you. Okay. There were some really, but it's also it just is so. I actually like that one. <laughs> so if you want to use it, you can use it. All right. Thank you. But it really is just it just depends on the crowd because there's some that we thought were hilarious and then right. they didn't laugh at all and we were like, okay, guess not. <laughs> but that was our last citizen question. Okay. Is there anything else that you want the citizens to know about you? Um, no, I'm, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm really not that interesting. Um, <laughs> but as far as it goes, I, I'll tell you, uh, the city of Midland, like Midland, Texas has been very good to me. Um, everything that I've done, good or bad, has been done here. And, and I, I'm, I have a bias towards Midland, Texas. And then uh, in working in this organization for over 20 years, I've seen a, a lot of people, you know, come and go and, and met some good friends and, and created some good relationships as far as this organization, the city of Midland goes. Um, even in working with you and your team on a daily basis, I mean, it, it really, I learn every day in this position. Mm -hmm. I mean, and I, and I take a lot of pride in learning uh, and, and from every aspect, from you and your team all the way to the entry level, entry level positions, you know, and I, I'm just a homer as far as it goes with, with Midland itself, but the city of Midland as an organization. Um, if I could tell the public one thing, I would say, you know, uh, support, your city staff know that there are people that do jobs that you will never know, you'll mm -hmm. never see, but they do a lot to keep this city functioning.
And mm. they are people just like them. Right. They are, they're people just <laughs> like us. We're human behind that is the, correct. the position. That is correct. So, But if someone has anything that they want to, that they're curious about, that they want more information about, do you, they reach yes. out to you? Yes. Or what yes. should they do? They, 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 call, they call down the city hall. They can always reach out to me. They can call me. Uh, they can call and ask for them. We stay kind of busy. We're in meetings and this, that, and the other. But if they reach out to me and they have a question or a concern, I want to hear it. I want to hear it, whether that's good or bad. I mean, it could be thanks for what you guys do or what, you know, somebody else does and I take the credit for it, right? But, or if they have a question or a concern or even a complaint, we want to know it because mm -hmm. we want to be better. And that's, that's our job. My main job is to come in and support those who do the work and make sure they have the tools to get it done and then to make this city better. And so that's that's my daily duty. That's what I strive to do every day. Morris, thank you so much for coming to chat with us well, today. Thank you, Aaron. It was great. I enjoyed it. Thank you, everyone. That concludes episode seven of My Midland. We'll chat with you next time.